Hello, um, welcome to uh, the stream, the ready, new Ready Up stream, uh, where I'll be playing through Stellaris, except I'm calling it Spidaris, because I will be <laughs> playing as a uh, race of science-loving spiders. I did, uh, I did catch that hot pun in the in the Discord chat. Yes, it took me ages to think of that. So you know that's <laughs> that's going to be the quality of punnage on the nice. on the stream. So if you're into that level of punnage, then then stick around, and I'm sure there'll be a few more. Um, uh, welcome, Scott, um, the ever watchful technical guardian of Ready Up. Um, <laughs> yes, I am the background technical pedant. Yeah, I'm here to make sure everything doesn't explode. Basically, helping me out. Does this this game looks pretty pretty interesting. Oh, have you not played it? I've not played it. Like, it wasn't okay. it late April? Yeah, yeah, it's been out a few months now. But the reason I'm jumping back into it is because there was a big expansion that came out very oh, recently. Oh, that's what I'm thinking of then. I heard yeah. something at the end of April, like a, a bunch of new PR about this. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I think it's been out for about a year prior to that. Um, right. And I played it a little bit. Uh, yeah. and generally really liked it but then it did this thing that a lot of real-time strategy games do where it kind of like you had all of the fun of exploration at the start and then there was just like a really quiet mid game where you were kind of penned between two mm. big empires that you couldn't quite yeah. take on and it got a bit boring so I stopped playing it it but... sort of plateaus in the middle until someone breaks the stalemate yeah but like the the new expansion has been specifically designed to address the kind of mid game lull basically okay. So oh, that's good taking feedback on board, yeah. Yeah, so hopefully it should uh, should be interesting all the way through. Because I know this game famously has a lot of really interesting end game scenarios that can happen. So it's just that middle bit of the game. You that... just, just got to get to them. Exactly. Um, so um, I've only really played this once before. Um, so I've been looking for for an opportunity to play it again. And also, this is kind of my virgin stream. Ooh. So as a host, anyway. So I've popped in and spoken on other people's streams. <laughs> but you have been with us since the beginning of our streaming experiments. Yep. That's true. Yeah, I, I've been trying to pluck up the courage because it's a, it's a bit big step, isn't it? It's, um, <laughs> And... Oh, you've got it, dude. You've got it. <laughs> yeah, I finally plucked up the courage, and I finally found the right game to do it with because I think this is this isn't a heavily reaction based game. D is Dean it? is one of our for anyone watching. Dean is one of our podcast maestros. He's uh, he's been on the podcast for a long time now with with Sue. Yeah, we've been hosting it for a couple of years, me and Susan now, and uh, yeah, it's been really good fun and really interesting. And I figured I should give some of this video malarkey thing a go give because a it seems to be popular, doesn't it? Like, um, it's, it's picked up a little bit, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> You know, I remember when twitching used to just mean bird watching, but you know. Oh, I see. Okay, that was a quality prepared joke. I see. Yeah, yeah I, I I thought about that one, but. <laughs> <laughs> see, I was gonna say I remember when Twitch was just in TV, which is less of a joke. And there a fact. we go. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Um. Uh, so shout outs to oh. uh, Verity and Adam from the Ready Up team who are listening in the chat. Yes. Uh, if Verity says. <laughs> She does. Uh, Dean in space, and and she also says you spider loving weirdo, which <laughs> spider -loving is spider loving weirdo. Great, right, yeah, um, yeah, I, I I do like spiders quite a lot, um, and uh, Susan's commenting about my old man joke, so we're onto nice. the onto a winner here, I think. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah, we're all old men now on this part of the stream. Well, yeah, that's true. In contrast, to most of the streaming public, we are probably yeah. ten. 10 or 15 years older than we should be um yep. but you know we can carve out our own little niche of the internet like our own little, little frog, kind of exactly yeah um, uh we've, got, we've jumped up to nine years although that's probably just Susan, i guess oh that's uh, great we've, uh, we've also got hit pat welcome hit pat you joined Hello. us for a XCOM stream a couple of weeks ago so yeah thanks for joining us adam from ready up is on street on on chat as well so hello adam yep. um, hello adam I hadn't noticed um it... yeah so um shall shall we shall we get cracking we i think we've, we dive in? we've stared so, at this beautiful a... space station enough i think hey, it's um, it's nice so you get the nice orchestral backing stirring but... music isn't it it's like this yeah. let's go and conquer space yeah there you go yeah and just... it is and it is really the conquer space conquer place people with paradox here it is yeah 
Conquer kind of, that's their thing. But it, it's conquer things in a very thoughtful way, Paradox. Yes. You have to think about it for a long yeah. time before you do it. It's one of those kind of games. So it will be running, I think it, you know, runs, you know, it, it, it runs, it's kind of a real-time strategy thing, but, like, you can kind of pause it to actually make decisions yeah. and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah. So what we what we doing difficulty wise here then? Okay. Just, so let's go. Let's go new game. Um. Here are my. Uh. I'm. So so yeah. These are my spider guys. Um. I think these are guys that I'd already kind of set up a bit before, but I can edit them. So I'm going to do that. So I, I I'm obviously about twenty seconds behind. I'm same as the stream guys. Oh yeah. Okay. So uh, you I'm haven't seeing, seen the spider uh, yet. The, Extel, Elstel, Elstek, Eltek, Ziltek Confederation Zeltek. There we go. of Sons. Confederation of Sons. Although I might change the name. Let 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 let's edit this. Okay. Um, and well, actually, let's scrap it and start from scratch because that's let's do that. So, so you know, you've got a bunch of kind of general starting dudes. You can have the the funny thing about this game is all of the races are kind of derived from different kind of like animal kingdoms from earth so you've got your weird lizard dudes and your weird kind of owl people um uh, <laughs> and weird mollusk I got, guys I got, I got a friend who's into rts and really into birds maybe I oh should yeah let them oh yeah they'll love this in. yeah yeah totally <laughs> that this this dude here who you'll see in a little bit is a fungus man. oh yes yeah, yeah um so so that's kind of good um but they all have different starting uh, bonuses and things. Got some uh, Cthulhu looking guys here as well. Yeah. So let's go with um, <laughs> this one's quite funny. The Blorg commonality. That's uh, <laughs> that's pretty great. Uh, so let's go create new. You can randomise one as well, which could let's try and randomise one and see what happens. Is that a Borg joke they slipped in there? It might well be. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Oh, is it actually going to show me the randomised empire or? Oh, hold on. Oh, here. Is it loading? Is it loading? No, hold on, I'm back. Is this, a, is this a total dice roll? Uh, I, I'm just going to go create new, I think, because that's confused me now. So create new, okay, so here's the screen. Uh, I am going to change this to... Hold on, how do I change... How do I change the actual thing? The species and name. Uh, how do we change the appearance? Ah, here we go. Right, appearance. We want uh, anthropoid. Right. Yeah. And these are the spider dudes. So because these are as all... we've established, you're nuts. Yeah. Uh... So these are all of like the weird insect races, and the spiders were. Like they didn't originally come with the game. I had to pay like four quid extra just to have the spider race. Um, so <laughs> I insist on playing as them. Uh, so that's going to happen. So we've got the spider dudes. Um, and we're going to randomly roll a name. Um, Multix. Or should we just try and think of a pun? Let's try, try and think of a let's try and think of a good name scott what if you were a kind of spider nation what would you what would you call yourself um, your your spider species oh, it'd probably be some sort of pun on like you know the web or see i'm i'm gonna refer to the universe as the intergalactic the great intergalactic web so okay, we've already okay, got so the, the your... web uh jokes covered um right okay so let's go for um Something tarantula themed, shall we? So, tar are you are you team Skulltula or scheme or team Skulltella? Skulltella, what's that? So, uh, for anybody who didn't get that, um, in the Zelda games, there is oh. a type of uh, spider enemy called a Skulltula or a Skulltella, as apparently it's been. Uh, someone was corrected and told it's pronounced Skulltella, despite it being, you know, spelled like tarantula. So you would assume Skulltula. Yeah. Uh, and that would also make the pun make sense. Right. Uh, but apparently it was lost somewhere in translation. So I'm still Team Skulltula, personally. Right. Yeah. And whenever anybody says Skulltella, I acknowledge that they're probably correct, but disagree with them. <laughs> <laughs> um. 
Did you come up with that plural? Yeah. Uh, yes. It, I just put an S on the end. It's fine. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hold on. No, I've missed it. I've missed an N out. Uh, Turan. No, I haven't. I've done yes. Turan. No, that thing shouldn't go there. I can't, I do know how to spell. Honest. <laughs> right. So we're playing as the Tarantula Tarantulians. God, that's okay, a mouthful, yeah. isn't it? Tarantulians. I can't even say it. Um, you got your boy Garris. Got my boy Garris. Yeah. Uh, we need a better um, like little uh, dec decal there, don't we? A decal. How we say it? Oh, here we go. Blocky. Oh, there's lots of different ones. Do I have a web one? Zoological. Yeah, it's got to be a web. Yeah, it's a web. Um, and it's got to be green. Green web. There we go. Uh, with a biohazard sign behind it. Cool. That's that sorted. Uh, next. Now I have to choose my starting weapons. So, do I want my society to have developed projectile weapons, missile weapons, or energy weapons? So what's the key advantage of each type? Uh, so it is missile weapons, space to space missiles armed with nuclear warheads. Excellent range, but they're vulnerable to interception by point defense systems. Projectile weapons uh, use mass drivers um, to accelerate projectiles. Uh, limited range, but kinetic energy and high rate of fire chew through shields. And then energy weapons, directed energy weapons emit few focused laser beams at their targets they're effective at medium to close range largely ignoring the bulk of enemy armor i i, mean, I, I think energy weapons I, I sound yeah i would say if i had to guess i would energy sounds like the most suitable choice yeah because it's kind of like a shooting out a web isn't it shooting out a, like a, <laughs> a beam of silk gonna stay on theme yeah I'm, I'm, I'm gonna stay on theme as much as possible which is why for the ftl method uh, I am going to choose wormhole travel. Uh, we talked oh, about yes, this on the podcast course. before, but it's basically <laughs> interstellar spiders coming out of interstellar plug holes. Wormhole That's is it. clearly most appropriate. So, um, so you can either have warp travel, where your ship just goes really fast to another place in a straight line, basically, um, yeah. but it's quite slow. Um, hyperspace travel allows ships to breach the dimension of hyperspace. So it's fast, but it's limited to existing paths along the hyperlane network. So you're going along a specific network. You're kind of trapped along uh, yeah. yeah, and warp travel is just like you can fly anywhere, but more slowly. Wormhole travel is recommending advanced players here, but I'm going to ignore that. Because, um, <laughs> you know, what could go wrong? What um, could go wrong? Yeah. Especially on a stream. <laughs> exactly. So wormhole generators tunnel through uh, subspace and establish a conduit between two points, permitting travel across vast distances. But they're too big to be fitted on ships, the, the generators, so you require specific wormhole stations to operate. So it's literally you have to establish forward bases that can be your nodes, like the mass relays in, in the mass I was going to say it's mass effect style, yeah. Yeah. Um, so we're going to choose those. And then uh, we probably want anthropoid ships. The ships are kind of like not that exciting looking. Although the avian ships look cooler. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I, I feel like thematically I should go for the kind of like insectoid ships, but the, those bird ships. Uh, look the molluscoid cool. ones are pretty cool as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's let's go with those then. Um, unless I get a giant ship that looks like a giant spider, but like I see no evidence of that happening, um, so I'm going <laughs> to click on that. Um, uh, okay, so my homeworld name. Um, let's go through some random ones just to see if it comes up with anything good. Insectopia. Uh, insectopia, or um, or. The Anchor. Um, how about the... Anchorage. I'm going to call it the Silken Heart. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, I'm going to go poetic, poetic. Poetic on it. Um, yeah. uh, the star can be... The... Uh, what, what, what would the star be? What could the star be? Like, the... the... 
what would a spider imagine um imagine the sun is before it developed enough science to figure out what it actually was uh the table lamp the uh, great no. table lamp. <laughs> <laughs> um you're uh, thinking of carpet people i like it um yes i've, I've, I've yeah. down a step yes um, um so it, it could be like the Okay, I'm not going to get too hung up on this, so let's just say... The barn hole. The... the, the, the I was yeah. going with... Uh, I was trying to make a Charlotte's Web reference, but it didn't really work. Is that what it's... Hang on, what's the... The burn hole? Is that is that what they call the sun in that? I, I, I feel like... No, I'm pretty sure I made that up, but maybe maybe they did. Let's go uh, to Charlotte, then. There you go. Yeah, there we go. That's fine. Starting solar system. Uh, do we want... Soul, random, Deneb, the Commonwealth of Man start, starting solar system. Uh, we want random, I think. Um, and we want our, our world to be probably wet. A tropical world, probably. Spiders like tropical things. So. Yeah, the insects would make sense, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, the silken heart. I, ha I now have a tropical preference, which gives me various um, bonus stats. Racial to, bonuses to take things? Yeah, to specific uh, biomes, um, which is nice. So I'll be looking for those. So does that affect planets. when you're like invading them or set establishing new co uh, colonies? Yeah, when you're kind of finding new planets to settle on. Cool. So, I'm gonna, this is a city appearance, so. Uh, kind of insectoid city. Once again, the avian city kind of looks coolest. But, you know, <laughs> those damn birds, they get all of the good shit. Damn birds, yeah. Okay, so this is where it gets interesting. Because this is where you choose your kind of alignment and uh, the, the, the way your species thinks about the world. Your ideology, uh, basically. Uh, yeah. So there's lots of different elements here so so first of all there's ethics and there's kind of a little bit of a uh, a grid thing here uh, where uh, basically you can pick um, to be aligned to one of these ideologies or you can be fanatically aligned to it uh, which costs two points instead of well actually it costs two points in addition to I think in addition to the one point um, is that like the zealot level of yeah so you get an even bigger bonus but it means that the thing on the other side of the um of the grid here becomes uh becomes like you can't do things in that direction so for example militarism is diametrically opposed to pacifism uh and xenophile is diametrically opposed to xenophobe um authoritarian sense, yeah. egalitarian spiritualist materialist now oh, I, 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 quite, I quite like the circle layout for this yeah and and this thing in the middle uh hive minded uh just costs three uh so that looks like it's a special thing i don't know if this might have been added by the uh, is that a racial yeah i don't know i think this might have been added by the expansion i can't remember seeing this before oh uh also shout outs in the chat to uh majay 27 Hello. Welcome. Or X fan, or maybe just really like bugs. <laughs> yeah, welcome to the spider, the spider, uh, spider part the cast. Yeah. Um, so it, it looks like the hive mind thing is a completely different way of playing the game. So you you must use a hive mind authority. Hive mind rulers are immortal. Oh, hive minded okay. pops are not affected by happiness and will not join faction. It, so it sounds like it's. I, I'm going to steer away from that because it sounds like it's its own kind of totally focused thing. And I don't think spiders are hive minded because although they're insects, they're very independent and fiercely territorial. It's, it's uh, ants, I believe. It's yeah. Like... So ants and bees. If I was playing a giant bee. I'd, I'd probably pick that yeah. but i think that the defining factor of spiders is that they like to build shit right i think that's kind of the main defining factor so yeah even, i even as a, a sort of predatory being 
they still build things in service of that. <laughs> yes. So I think that they uh, are quite materialist as a result of this. Um, yeah, that so makes sense. I am going to make them fanatical materialist, um, which means that they can use full AI rights policy. I don't know what that means, but that sounds quite exciting. Um, oh, uh, Majay is saying greetings from Romania. Oh, uh, cool. Welcome. Uh, we are. I'm in Scotland up here, and I'm in Norwich uh, on the East, East Anglia. Um, but yeah, very, very welcome. Um, so yeah so we have some fanatical materialist spiders so we're going to build webs across space basically um that's my plan uh, and then i think we're going to spend one more ethic points because you only start with three uh i think they're going to be i think they might be a bit spiritualist as well oh but then the spiritualists don't use don't like ai <laughs> which is against your other chief advantage yeah <laughs> uh at Jew has also joined the stream and says spider robots in three two <laughs> yes <laughs> sounds good is that is that an option uh I th well i think um i can make robots so i'm gonna certainly imagine that they're spider robots um i'm just looking at the bonus on these other things to see if one particularly strikes me i mean this is kind of monthly unity so that's kind of like increasing how well your people cooperate and get on nice. um, uh, trust growth are good for the xenophiles um, authoritarian have low resettlement costs um, spiritualists have low unrest Oh, the chat's kicking off a bit here. Is it? Uh, Do I have some recommendations? Oh, if someone... you've got any recommendations, chat, give us a show. Ah. Uh, Peasant RFTG Bullet. says, greetings from Norwich. I think that might yeah, be okay. a friend of mine who I know. Uh, awesome. So, yeah, uh, I, th I think. Mistress Lilith is from the back loggery. Uh, and cool. I don't know who uh, that's due is, but welcome anyway. <laughs> I think that might be my friend, Rich. I hope, I hope it is. Hello, how's it going? Um, Are these one of the people that you kicked out of your board game? <laughs> no, no. I wouldn't kick him out. <laughs> it's like, sorry, I have to digitally board game people. Exactly. That, went, that was highly entertaining uh, as well. Uh, we did a tabletop simulator stream. Yeah, that was very good. Once, so... once my connection stopped acting funky with, with tabletop, it was, it was good stuff playing. What was that second game, the Secret Agent one? Uh, code names. Code names. I, yeah. I quite enjoyed code names. Yeah, very good. Uh, anyway, okay, so let's just go with. Yeah, let's go with. Are they xenophobic? I don't know. Xenophobic spider materialist dudes, maybe. Maybe I think they're authoritarian spider dudes. That's Jew is just a random yeah, Stellaris fan. Cool. Okay. So they're fanatical materialist spider dudes who are slightly authoritarian. Mm -hmm. um, and I can now pick an authority. Uh, so I can't pick democratic anymore. I can pick oligarchic, holds an election every 40 to 50 years to select a new ruler. Um, the democratic one would be every 10 years. Uh, dictatorial, holds an election upon ruler death to select a new ruler. Oh. Or imperial, imperial governments are similar to dictatorial ones except that the throne is always inherited by a designated successor. So I was, you know, I, I'm not, a, I wouldn't call myself a history buff, but I did do a history in secondary school. Yep. And I was familiar with all of those except the uh, the or what was it awful oligarchic Olga? yeah yes. Oligar oligarchy go oligarchic governments are ruled by a small group of individuals that hold all political power um, you you often hear of kind of Russian oligarchs they're kind of like usually quite wealthy kind of oil uh, families um, 
sure. hold a lot of power. Um, I, I'm uh, kind I, of leaning I, towards oligarchy or di dictatorial. I think. Um, uh, me, 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 MJ. Uh, I think pacifists allow only liberation, uh, liberation wars, and vassal ones. Yeah. That means nothing to me, but I. Uh, yeah, if you click on pacifist, it says uh, you cannot use uh, specific war policies. The right, you can't use okay. the unrestricted wars policy. Uh, so I'm going to pick uh, oligarchic spider people. I think that's kind of cool. Um, so now, uh, what's all this crap? I have to pick things. Okay, so, so civics. So I think these are little bonuses that I can I can pick two of them. Uh, so, uh, sorry, this is taking a little while, but uh, That's, hey, this is probably <laughs> the least of it. <laughs> yeah. okay. So this is kind of like giving you specific bonuses. So technocracy uh, to maximize efficiency this society is governed according to the principle of science and rationality that certainly sounds like what my spiders would be, would be like yeah yeah the personal whims of an ignorant and dangerously unqualified political elite must not be allowed to interfere yeah I'm gonna go technocracy uh... Do spiders care about the environment? <laughs> they are part of the environment by their very nature. Yeah. Uh, so are we, for that matter. Um, let's see, mining guilds. Mining guilds could be more mineral production. That would certainly help with building. Functional architecture. This society is renowned for its simple yet functional architecture. Uh, webs, are, webs are quite elegant. Mechanist. This society has been preoccupied with the idea of metallic automatons since the early Steam Age. That certainly sounds. Oh, start the game with four population paying robots and with the technology to build more robot maintenance costs minus five. So, Atchews. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> it's coming yeah. true. Bring on, bring on the robot spiders. That's what bring I'm on saying. The spider robots. Um, so, I think that's all I can pick now. So, yeah. I'm I'm quite happy with that. I think. All right. Yeah. Uh, I think that's all done now. So click next and my empire name now. Um, um. The box. I'm, I'm thinking oh. something to do with Kazan. I mean, the most one of the most common spiders is the orb spinner spider. Um, yeah. So I'm thinking of something along those lines, uh, and maybe a kind of a homage to Orbital, the classic kind of dance act as well. So um, <laughs> <laughs> multi-level puns. Here. Yeah, the great Orbital. Uh, peasant says, "Shame there isn't a special samurai perk for Dean." Yeah, that it is. It is a shame. Uh, is that is that one of your preferences? In... Yeah, it, it, it's it's a well, a, a lot of my board games are samurai <laughs> themed, and I have a soft spot for that period and those films uh, and whatnot. So, oh, of course, yeah, um, I do for you tell good me old that. classic samurai film over a western any day. Um, one Look. could argue that a lot of westerns are just samurai. Exactly, yeah. There's definitely a lot of crossover between those two genres. Yeah. I'm calling us the Great Orbital Enclave. I think. It's asking That's me good. for an adjective, but I don't really know what that would be. Uh... <laughs> uh how do I adjectivize that? Um, I'm just going to put it in again and see what happens. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, oh, we've already got that. Uh, we've already got that. It's just going through these again. Yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. Uh, yes, 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 yes. All done. Save. Okay. 
See, yeah. uh, this is taking quite a while, but you could be playing this over multiple streams. So oh yes, probably... yeah, that, that's the idea. Yeah. Um, so, so it's good to it's good to set up this properly. Yeah, this is going to be yeah, this is going to be a long haul. So yeah, we're going to do it properly, and 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 because we're going to do it properly, I think we're going to go for a large galaxy, or right. maybe a huge galaxy. I think. I think. I think large. any galaxy that has more than one star is probably a pretty big galaxy. That's true. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I, mean, I guess that's galaxy, a solar system, but ga galaxies have, you know. Ten, hundreds of thousands of stars. Yeah, I guess I guess they do, but I, I think I was thinking of solar systems. Yes, yeah. Uh, so then we've got galaxy shape. So we can have an elliptical galaxy, which mm. um, I believe is kind of just a kind of um, a kind of lozenge shape kind of thing, um, like a squashed circle. Or we can have a classic <laughs> a lozenge. Yeah. Are we thinking? Or what? Well, we gotta get. We gotta get specific here. Are we thinking like tunes? Are we thinking? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Kind of just your your, your garden variety cough suite. Um, yeah. So uh, then you've got your classic spiral arm galaxies with different set different amounts of arms, uh, two or four. Uh, and then there's a ring galaxy, which I imagine is a ring. Um, <laughs> so. Um, I, I think s spirals might get a bit tricky because if you end up on one of the outer arms of the spiral, it might be hard to kind of move into another one. So let's try an elliptical oh, yeah. one. Yeah. An elliptical one. Let's just take. Should we just do the default 12 AI empires? Because that's the default for 800 stars. Wow, okay, yeah. So there's 12 of us trying to carve up these 800 stars between us. Um, four of those will be starting with um, more with an initial advantage. Um, so there'll be better developed uh, civilizations. Uh, a maximum of three fallen empires. This controls the maximum number of fallen empires that are allowed to spawn in the galaxy. They're ancient precursor civilizations that start with advanced technology and powerful fleets, but are not allowed to expand or build new ships. Um, and then we've got habitable wor worlds. Uh, this is a modifier on the chance of a planet in the Goldilocks zone of a solar system being habitable. The higher this is, the more habitable worlds the galaxy will contain overall. Are you familiar wow. with the Goldilocks zone? No, I mean, I, th I think I've heard it before, but... Uh... It comes from, like, the children's story, Goldilocks and the Three oh, Bears. Oh, yes, I and, and, the etymology yeah. I could figure out. But the... so, so eating the porridge, it's like, oh, this porridge is too hot, this porridge is yeah. too cold, this porridge is just right. It's like, there's a habitable zone in any galaxy. Um, yeah. that life can evolve on a planet so planets within that um, zone tend to be within this Goldilocks zone um, so I'm going to put uh, a modifier at Stu says uh, if I had to count the number of hours I've spent in the race creator so you're not <laughs> yes so I'm going to I'm going to double that to two times increasing the amount of habitable worlds that can be found in galaxies because i want i want more place to build webs um also welcome to the stream fran hello fran how's it going i mean she's not on discord oh okay sorry i meant welcome to the chat fran <laughs> i should say okay we'll have that as a, sh a general shout out um Okay, cool. I'll leave the difficulty on normal because I am convinced I'm going to get my ass kicked anyway. Uh, I'm allowing any FTL. But it should be entertaining. It should be an entertaining ass kicking for sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Empire placement is going to be in clusters. I guess that makes most sense. Advanced neighbors. This controls whether empires with advanced AI stats are permitted to spawn near a player. Having this on may result in a less less than the specified number of advanced starts being generated. Hmm. I don't know if I want an advanced neighbour right next to me, so we'll, we'll go with off. Endgame oh, crises. No. That, that's the fun bit. I'm definitely having that on. And oh. Iron Man mode. Oh, okay. Well, Man mode yeah, do we want to do that? In games play uh, the same. There's no turning back. Yeah. The game is automatically saved regularly to a single file. 
I think that might be too too much, much. at this point. <laughs> yeah, I, I think. Yeah, I think we're going to try and get through it, and if that means going back a little bit, then. But so be it. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, that was kind of the choice that Sue and I, uh, Susan, faced when yeah. we started XCOM. Like, really, in the true, the true spirit of XCOM would be probably to play it in Iron Man mode. But yeah, we were like, for the sake of the stream <laughs> and for the sake yeah. of all getting through this, we decided no. And to be fair to Sue, uh, she improved dramatically over the course of that stream. She could probably, she probably could have handled Iron Man, I think, but it would have. Yeah, be quite a few losses, but yeah, I mean that's the kind of thing that you do on your second time through if you yes. want a challenge. Yeah. Um, yeah. Although you're okay. being called out by peasant. Am I? <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm just uh, spiders don't have balls. Everyone knows that. There you go. Um, uh, and a hello from Fran. Hello, Fran. <laughs> Always good to see you. Uh, so uh, this is the start of the game there's a lot of so, so what what happens at the beginning here uh okay so shall i shall i have a look at this uh, little bit of text here so this is in the eons since the first primitive tarantulian communities took shape in the dense jungles of the silken heart our civilization has spread and prospered through scientific progress we have managed to stamp out the superstitions that ruled the minds of our ancestors as reason and rational thought spread among our people the inter inefficient nation states that we had until then organized ourselves in into were disbanded and a council of our most accomplished scientists was gathered to rule in their stead see this is exactly how i want the world to be get rid of nations <laughs> just have science like a world worrying. government of scientists like just it'll be fine um so now after the successful creation of artificial subspace wormholes the finest minds in the great orbital enclave have finished construction of the first wormhole station at the edge of our system the stars themselves are finally within our grasp begin greetings director okay approach type is that weekly intelligence developed by the finest minds of our civilization to serve as your advice he looks like uh weekly for sure but his uh so here's the tutorial but but um i i i don't know because i've i've been i've been through this a little way but you you may be a bit, a bit rusty, rusty. Tutorial missions and descriptions of the interface as you explore the game's mechanics. Recommend if it's the first time you're playing. You will get tips and suggestions as you explore. Recommended for novice. Uh, let's just go tips only because I don't want... Very well. I will provide tips explaining only basic functions and tools as you explore them. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, cool. So, it's paused at the moment as demonstrated by this. Uh, at the top here are all various kind of researchers, um, resources right. that I have. Uh, yeah. I can't remember what any of these are for. So energy credits <laughs> uh, seems to be the most important one. Uh, you you gain a certain amount every every month, um, uh, and you produce them as well. And then uh, some is being spent on building ma maintenance, population maintenance. So it's an energy-backed currency accepted by all spacefaring races. Um, I can gain more by building or upgrading power plants on the surface of colonized planets using construction ships. To build. You. Yeah, they're basically bitcoins, right? So you, you, you <laughs> make the them through expending power in power plants and running algorithms. So, you know, they're bitcoins. Um, Except you can't mine them with like spare AMD cards. Uh, yeah, I guess. Um, so, minerals. Uh, so, I have 200 stored and I'm gaining 11 a month. Um, and they're basic resources we need to construct ships, stations and planetary buildings. So, silk basically. Um, we can increase our monthly min mineral production by mining networks or mining stations around mineral rich planets or asteroids. And then we have food, which is obviously needed for feeding people. Um, so, uh, surplus food will be stockpiled according to the food stockpile policy and contributes to population growth if the stockpile is full. So yeah, the higher your food production is, the faster your population will increase. 
And then you have influence, uh, which is uh, political clout, and it's used for many things like enacting edicts, uh, recruiting sure. leaders, building frontier outposts, and dealing with factions. The gain rate may remains fairly constant throughout the game, but can be slightly increased by different things. So this is kind of like your special currency, you are unlocking perks and special, doing special events and stuff like that. And then Unity is used to unlock new traditions. We can increase our output by building autochthon monuments. I don't even know how to say that. So. Oh okay. yeah. Yeah. Autochthon? No, all right. Yeah, you could be a talk fun. You're right. Yeah. I'm not sure. Anyway, okay. So those are resources. Then we have the three different types of research: physics research, society research. And engineering research um, for researching various things, so there's tech trees and things in this game. Uh, then there's strategic resources, these are usually uncovered by researching technologies, uh, usually grants you an empire wide bonus. You only need access to a single unit of a strategic resource for its full benefits, so access units can be freely traded away. So these are kind of like little perk things, like you know spices and things that you get on a sieve map or something like that um, <laughs> uh, and this is like showing us how many how many systems that we're controlling at the moment uh up to a maximum so we have one system and we can comfortably uh colonize three at the moment um we have to find a way to expand that if we want to do more and this is our naval sure. capacity we have three ships and we have a maximum of 14. I don't know what this means. Okay, so physics research. Okay, so this is just a uh, little prompters telling me that um, I need to set my research for various things. So let's the click on physics research. Where we will be directing our research efforts. Technologies are categorized into three different fields. So is this, is this a prompt to like, hey, if spear researchers go do something? Yeah. So basically, it's going to give me three options each time I can research something. And I think they're randomized, but they, they also follow tech trees, so you can't research something without having researched the prerequisite thing. Um, uh, so... Uh, sorry, I just sneezed there. I muted myself. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, so so these are kind of... Um, oh, shit. Uh, these are the kind of the things that we can research. Uh, no, sorry. These are the things that we have researched because they're starting technology. So we have, we have the ability to build power plants, fission reactors, basic science labs, wormhole stations, and laser defense modules with red lasers. Um, but so I have three researchers, uh, and one does physics, one does society, and one does engineering. So I can I can choose a research for each one. So let's have a look at these. Uh, so we can do orbital energy conversion. Um, we could do quantum theory. We can do administrative AI, or we can do fusion power. What, what do you think is the most useful in early game? Um, I tend to always lean towards early game things that give you a bonus to like the overall speed of things happening. So, like administrative. So cumulatively, you've got more overall. Yeah. So, like the administrative AI will just increase all my research speed by five percent for the rest of the yeah. game. So, I think I'm gonna go for that. Um. Uh, so it's now telling me that there's 46 months uh, remaining until that is researched, which sounds like a long time. But then we're dealing with um, cosmic periods of time here. <laughs> so, um, so society research, I could increase my naval capacity. I can um, do planetary unification, which allows me to do propaganda broadcasts and increases my monthly influence. Biodiversity studies, which unlocks Biolab. I don't know what the Biolab does. Okay, it tells me if I hover over it. Uh, Biolab's are specialised institutions generating additional society research. Okay, so they give me more society research, which I can spend on society research. Uh, and symbols of unity. So this is a purple one, so this is rare technology. So probably want to do this one, maybe. 
So it says, as we explore more of the galaxy and its wonders, it becomes increasingly important for us to reaffirm our beliefs and to unify our people under one symbol. I do like the rare. I, I like to see that purple. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's nice to see some purple, isn't it? Um, that, that's, that gives me... I can build a symbol of unity with this, which produces some things and gives me increased happiness. Um, so when it comes to... I'm gonna 4X. Do that. I haven't really done any real time 4X, but I mean, I played my fair share of like Civ. Yeah. Uh, so I'm obviously recognizing a lot of similar mechanics here. Mm. Um, so that'd be similar to the Wonders. Yeah. Mechanic, I suppose. Yes, yes. Um, cool. Having one of those early on sounds good. Mm. Um, and now engineering, uh, geothermal. Would you factory. assume it's just a giant bug? Would it? <laughs> Yes, yeah, so it's yeah. a, a statue of a giant bug. Really yeah. big bug. Yep. Uh, um, <laughs> as June in the chat says that the red lasers are actually just for messing with cat races. Ah, uh, nice, nice. Um, we need something to defeat the, the the great fly empire. I hope there's a fly empire in this game. I'll be very upset if there isn't a fly empire for us to, to thwart. Um, a flim pie. A flim pie, yes. Um, <laughs> another quality pie. Uh, so, uh, engineering research. We have geothermal fracking. I, I love, I love the word fracking. Um, even though the actual <laughs> process is quite bad, uh, the word is fantastic, and also reminds me of the swearing on Battlestar Galactica. So oh, I think course, you know yeah. I'm going to be. It's going to be difficult to you know disincentive. To resist that. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So I can do nano mechanics, uh, which increases. Uh, I can make an engineering facility, which gives me stuff. Um, I can build nano com composite materials, uh, which allows me to improve armor. Um, or I can build ion thrusters, which use beams of ions to generate thrust without the need for propellant. That sounds useful. Uh, increases speeds and chance to evade and all of that jazz. But I'm, efficiency. I'm gonna click on geothermal fracking because <laughs> you can't, you, you know, just couldn't resist that one. I'm gonna be building shitloads of things, so this is gonna increase my mineral so storage. It's, it's also useful. So it's, good. it's good, yeah, it's useful as well. Uh, I'm, I'm quite happy with that selection. Um, so we'll check back in 46 months and see how that's getting along. Um, right. uh, so what have we got up here? So government. The government screen presents us with information regarding our empire and its I government. I'm kind of a bit silent because I'm listening to Wheatley. And any related effects. <laughs> no worries. Uh, okay, so this is, allows us to have a general overview of who our re ruler is, uh, what government and uh, traits we have chosen. Um, yeah. You can also hold an emergency election if you want to, um, so you can intervene in the the political running of your of your little system there. Um, nice. So what have I got here? It's got an agenda of import export. Um, so we're getting ten percent extra food and ten percent extra trade attractiveness. Who is trading with you such that you get ten percent extra food? I like, don't know. No one, as far as I know. With... With the giant spiders. We're just so. trading with ourselves, I think. Um, so, so my particular uh, ruler here, uh, my director general, um, is he doesn't seem to have a name, which is um, a bit of a shame. I thought I thought they they got named, but anyway, he is an explorer. So my science ship build cost is uh, minus twenty five percent because he is very keen on on exploring, uh, and my anomaly research speed is thirty three percent increase. That's really good for the start of the game, actually. Yeah. Uh, my monthly influence because he has deep connections. I have plus one monthly influence, uh, so that's good. And then there's a budget screen. <laughs> Of oh, course, there is. <laughs> we can also don't worry, I don't think you need to go through that with this. <laughs> I hope not. Um, so, yeah. It's showing me my balance, which is a green number at the moment, which and it's more than zero, although only marginally. So that's good, at least. 
Yeah, that's the two factors you want. Green above zero. Yeah. And yeah, and this shows my uh, demographic. Uh, actually, there are more robots in my civilization than uh, spider people, which is a little bit worrying. Uh, maybe. Oh, it's 50% 50, 50 <laughs> each. It's a 50-50 split. 50-50 split, okay. So, yeah, that, that's kind of interesting. Uh, and it's showing what my population effects are. Great. Um, cool, so that's that. Contacts. We see a detailed list shows you who you've met we have yeah their opinions of us are visible. yes that's the diplomacy screen basically but we haven't met anyone yet so that's the kind of pointless of situation log is kind of your uh, journal um, I'm right. guessing um, what's victory is the that victory condition ah yes that we can to what is the victory condition yes yeah, so, good question so there are three victory conditions domination victory win the game by owning 40 percent of all habitable planets right okay. uh, conquest victory win the game by conquering or subjugating all other empires yep. um or federation victory win the game by having your federation own 60 percent of all inhabit habitable planets so you can build up a, a an alliance yeah yeah that that seems to be the case Okay, so not a huge amount of victory conditions, but it's mainly kind of settle and fight. Um, then technology any, any, is the research. Anyone jumping out at you that you might uh, go after, or will it be based on your progress, I guess? Um, probably start by just thinking about domination victory and kind of like spreading my spider my spider brethren <laughs> as, as spider far as seat. yeah exactly you know all of the little mini spiderlings flying oh, through God. space people, uh, <laughs> like, people just come into this chat i apologize if you have a thing for spiders they probably shouldn't have come into this chat yeah consider it's called spiders in space but... spiders are great and then there's a there's a tab that just says more and there's more more stuff here ship designs so I, lived, uh, and... I lived in brunei as a teenager oh really were there Actually, any spiders uh, pre pre teen uh, nineteen ninety six, so it'd be nine. Uh, and I lived at yeah Brunei, which mm -hmm. is at the other side of the world, Borneo, just across from Malaysia. Wow. Uh, and I was there for about uh, about six months, uh, six to nine months, if you take into account travel. Mm. Um, and yeah, uh, Borneo is basically a jungle. <laughs> mm. Uh, so while it was quite civilized, um, we did have you did have to be really careful when you went outside, uh, and there were big spiders and things. Um, we did have these awesome things called chit chats, though. Okay. Uh, chit chats are these little geckos that you would want to invite into your house because they ate the spiders. Okay. Uh, so if you saw a, if you saw a chit chat on the wall, it was like a sign of good luck. Okay. But not if you're playing as a spider race. Not if you're at the spider race. Yeah. I mean, that might be your ultimate enemy. You might <laughs> discover that in the, the, the farthest reaches of this galaxy, that a uh, chit chat race has, seen, has taken hold. Oh, God. It's your rivals. That's, that sounds terrifying. Okay, so I've zoomed in on the Silken Heart here, the very core of the Looking spider. Very the great... Yes, it's it's slightly more ocean, and maybe uh, the continents have broken up a little bit more. But it's looking very, very Earth-like. Um, so this this screen, uh, I've clicked on the planet. This is just showing me an overview: the governor who's in charge, what my resource output for that area is, uh, the habitability is 100%. Uh, it's my capital world, so it gets particular bonuses, um, like a reduction to unrest and things like that. Um, I can change the governor if I want to. These I can specific edicts. enact an edict, um, which I can buy, um, but it's expensive. Uh, so they last ten years, and they give you particular bonuses to things. All right, so it's kind of like a purchasable buff. Yeah, do you want to focus on education and stuff like that? And, um, then you can click yeah, on surface. surface into tiles. Okay. This tab is only visible on colonies and surveyed worlds that are habitable. But Take me down to the surface. What's the there? Tile. Yeah, okay. So, um, so basically, yeah. So this is... 
I've got different uh, populations uh, like that kind of um, live on these different tiles which represent different ch chunks of land. Um, some of them looks are like robots, a, so looks I've got a, some... Looks a little x -comy. Yeah, it does a bit, doesn't it? Um, it's like the base in a way. Um, yeah. These uh, ones with the biohazards borders are industrial wastelands and sprawling slums that you can clear to uh, improve. It contributes nothing to society. Uh, so clearing these sprawling slums would... Uh... The slums contribute <laughs> absolutely nothing, not even population. <laughs> Probably not, no, it's a little bit, it's a little bit it's, harsh. It's slightly disarming. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, many, like many of these kind of like uh, big RTS games, there are lots of sweet, sweeping value judgments being made <laughs> under the surface. If you dig just a little bit more deeply than uh yeah, yeah if you, you think about it a little too hard so you're you're clearing the slums okay so where are the people going it's okay it's yeah they're not important um so yeah so some of the land is empty um and as my population increases then different people will settle there and right. uh and then you get the bonuses on them so these minerals at the top here aren't being collected at the moment because there's no one in the tile and everyone else is in a more important tile so i need to wait for my population to increase before that happens um and some of these tiles as well have buildings on them so this has a hydroponics farm which is producing food um and this is a power plant which is producing energy credits um, so can you pick like a, a spare tile right now and do something with it i think so yes i can build some buildings may cause adjacency effects yeah right now you pause the tiles. universe let us take this yes. into consideration yeah. when constructing you. yeah so wheatley if was only just... we could do that for real yeah exactly so so wheatley was just explaining to me there that um some buildings have adjacency bonuses as well so building a particular building next to another one uh might oh so it's totally bonuses. Based on yeah that. exactly um oh i didn't start the construction uh, so hold on let's have a look here um, so yeah this is a monument to the first pioneers to venture into space which gives me that research resource which is unity um, basic science lab which produces research um, that I can I can spend on actually researching things I think that might speed up research I'm not 100% sure hydroponics farm gets me food um, Oh yeah, so the mineral silo, this one has an adjacency effect on it. Mineral output plus one, I'm guessing if it's next to a building of a similar type. Uh, mining network uh, gives me minerals and power plant gives me energy. Okay, cool. Um, so, let's build a mining network, shall we? Oh, hold on. Oh, no, I need, I need more energy to do that so i can so only it, actually the, afford to build a mineral silo at the moment in the early game and by early game i mean early 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 game where you are right now yeah uh, is your first your first action just to start building resources on your planet pretty much yeah so i think i need to build a power plant because then i will have the energy requirements to build to that space. other thing yeah um, I'm more, I'm already in space. You're I, ha in I have, space, a, I have a like... few ships in space. Yeah. So what I have are these guys here. Uh, so I have a, a, a space station. So it's a space spaceport. Um, it's various kind of defensive points and stuff like that. And it's power bar and whatnot. The spaceport tab is where we um, view orbiting fleets build new ships and upgrade the station itself so yeah this is where we can kind of like build ships and stuff um and these are the ships that are in the area of the spaceport um oh i see okay you've got, so you've got some stuff going on you got the science ship and the yeah ship. so and this is a construction, construction ship, ship which is used to construct space stations yeah when an astronomical object so yeah so this can construct various things next to different um different uh planets and asteroids and whatnot um 
and kind of one of the most important this things early on is the science ship. So basically, uh, I'm going to click on this guy because at the moment, um, pretty much everything other than our homeworld is unexplored. Uh, including the things in our solar system, really. You, you would think that those spiders would be pretty enthused about checking out that dwelling over there. Yes, uh, Garbanog's dwelling, which sounds a good, good spider. Who, who, is, who is Garnabog? I don't know. Gar Garbanog. Was he one of the founders of Spidertopia? Oh, maybe, yeah. Maybe it's like the brother of Shelab from Lord of the Rings. <laughs> um, so it's not been surveyed. Uh, it's a gas giant. Of course, it's probably not habitable because it's a gas giant. How do I survey it? Okay, so um, I've clicked on my science ship. Right, how do you hold the left trigger to scan the planet for resources? Yes, exactly. I want to launch a probe into Uranus. Um, <laughs> Uh, so go to are these the options for them from the ship? Or, okay, so this is the ship tab. Okay, so this is my science ship, ISS Panny the Glorious, um, piloted by Voltassa, um, who is very meticulous. So his oh, an yeah. anomaly discovery chance is plus ten percent, which is pretty good. Uh, so these are the things that I can choose to do with my science ship. I can survey, which I'm probably going to do. I can research an anomaly, um, if I find one. Um, and then I can set its stance. Uh, it's evasive because it's a science ship. And I can research a special project. Um, I'm going to survey. Uh, I think I'm going to survey. How do I make it survey the thing? I think if I click an object to survey, uh, order the science ships to survey stars, planets, and asteroids. Surveying will reveal detailed information. Click an object to survey the entire system. Control click to survey a single object. Okay, so it's just going to fly around and generally survey the system, or I can kind of like specifically tell it to survey something um, yeah. specifically so having done that I'm gonna unpause it which I think is spacebar so are you surveying please tell me you are okay so it's surveying and now it's gonna fly around and it's gonna survey uh, the solar system in that order but if I wanted it to survey something else more urgently, I could tell it to do that. Right, okay. So I could just leave that going now. Um, and there, there is its beam of surveying, its survey rays going down onto the planet, um, extracting all of its data. Um, and where can I... Okay, so it's finished surveying that, so it's quite quick. Uh, and sometimes I think it'll find something I don't know uh, this over here is my wormhole station uh, welcome to the chat dr. snuggles which is a fantastic name uh, uh, yes also, also welcome Lassiku who is one of our MVPs who attends quite regularly welcome 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 to the great spider enclave um, <laughs> Uh, is <laughs> scanning and establishing initial initial habitation, I guess. Yeah, I guess. Uh, so this is unknown misdirection. These directions are places I know about. Uh, so if I click on that, that is another galaxy. Uh, so I can go and explore that next if I want to. That's a little fly around. Ooh, that's a blue blue star. That's a red star. And this is kind of like looks like a bit like a disco ball um, okay cool so it's been finding stuff out about these planets and what it's found out about this planet is that it generates two uh, cogs two of whatever this is 
engineering research. Okay, and this asteroid over here uh, generates two minerals. So, without further ado, we are going to get our construction ship to fly over here. If I can remember what button. Mine some cog. Yeah, well, I can mine some mineral first, then we're going to mine some cog. Um, Uh, yeah, so he is going to build a mining station there. So he should be doing that now. Yep, there's the mining station right there. It's quite a way away from the asteroid. It's like you'd think that you'd build it closer. But, uh, yeah, maybe they're just worried about the Science ships you know, discover strange tiny bit of gravitation changes and then they get hit with some of the asteroids. Yeah. Health and safety's gotten out of control. Yes, exactly. So, like, uh, basically there's an anomaly that's been discovered and I can oh. set my science ship to research it. Uh, there is a small chance... Oh man, sorry, that's, that's amazing. The button just says, interesting. <laughs> You can't yes. see anything else. You can, you can, <laughs> interesting. Mm, interesting, yes. So there's a small chance that your scientists can die researching things because they tend to blow up or eat them or whatever. Um, but this one has a low failure risk. Well, who um, is going to eat the spiders? I don't know, man. There's some scary shit out there. You know. <laughs> I feel like you're already at the top of the the chain for scary I don't know. things. There might be some Cthulhu-esque kind of elder gods or something. I suppose. You just I don't suppose. know. Um, so I can kind of like research it if I want to, or I could change the scientist. I could assign this anomaly to a scientist aboard another science ship. You can either even assign it to the researchers that are just generally researching things. I think. Right. Um, or we could research it later, but because there's no real failure risk at the moment uh, I can just research it and then it will resume its action, previous actions when it's done researching so we might find something interesting um, unpause it what's going on over here who are you okay so this is a squadron of fighters oh combat action yeah, so I don't, I don't have. Do they belong to me. Oh, that's um, okay. Yeah, <laughs> you've yeah. been you've encountered another race. No, no, no. Um, but I just don't too have. Too early for that. <laughs> yeah, I just don't have anything. I find it interesting that our home planet is actually itself just the moon of a large gas giant, which is kind of cool. Yeah, that's a, that's a bit different. Yeah, it's not its own entity really. Can you imagine if Earth was like the moon of the gas moon giant? For some other planet, cool. yeah. yeah. Um, you just see that huge gas giant in the sky all the time. That'd be awesome. Um, okay, so I finished my building thing. Um, hold on, what's going on here? What's this? Secrets at the doorstep. The anomaly on Yatar's bulwark turned out to be a natural geothermic geometrical formation. It almost looks like a marker showing the way forward. The natural beauty of the universe can be quite astonishing. We should continue to investigate these sorts of anomalies whenever we get the chance. Oh, the mm. Protheans have left us behind. Yes, yeah. Uh, okay, so what's going on here? Because I think, what's that symbol? This symbol, this guy is enslaved. What the hell has happened here? <laughs> what, what? I didn't approve of this. I didn't sign any of these papers. That's what they all say, Dean. I don't, I don't know about this. Yeah. Spider That's scandal funny. on the silken heart. Uh, so he's completed a mining station. What's going on here? Set rights. What does that mean? So this guy, what? Just don't just tell me he's enslaved. Why is he enslaved? The species rights list allows us to customize the citizenship and living standards of a certain species, okay. amongst other things. So you can be really, really racist if you want to and be like, these guys, <laughs> you know, bottom of the food chain. Uh, yeah. Okay, so he's a member of the caste system at the moment. Uh, <laughs> populations of this species will be automatically enslaved only while producing food or mineral minerals. 
Oh God. It says some Tarantulians are more equal than others. Um, uh, or I can give it full citizenship. Uh, free to be politically active and the species can produce leaders. The animal farm of spiders. I don't want my guys to have a caste system. Do I? I mean, it doesn't sound ideal though. No. I can mark them as undesirables, which I imagine most people would, given that they're spiders. <laughs> um, <laughs> all populations of this species will be systematically purged. Um, great. I can immediately start the game by purging my home species, which would be silly. That would be quite strange. Maybe I can s spark a civil war between the spiders and the robots. Um, at the very beginning of the game and just see who wins um, okay so I'm going to give it full citizenship I think yeah the spiders the spiders have full citizenship of course that makes sense they're the going to be the ruling race in the galaxy yeah, the robots on the other hand oh hold on I can't set rights for the robots maybe it's just for their own rights. maybe it's just assumed that they don't have any Right, they are. It has made some other sweeping generalizations. <laughs> yeah, they are um, chattel slavery. Uh, they are slaves. Their living standards are non-existence. Um, right. As As you has a different opinion. Purge the filthy biologicals. The machine god demands it. No. <laughs> no, the spiders will prevail. Um, okay, so that's fine. He's still we're still marking him as enslaved. Oh, it's gone away now because I've unpaused it. Uh, this has got an adjacency effect going on. Why is that? Oh, it's because it's next to my planetary administration, which is improving the places around it. Um, production area. This building requires a grown population to function. Okay, so I built that before I was actually ready for it. But you live and you learn, don't you? Um, Okay, so what's going on here? I've got a negative balance. That's not good. Um, <laughs> Already? Well, it's telling me to build another power plant, which I just did, but I can't actually put anyone to work in it. Um, I have inactive buildings. I know about both of these things, so um, uh, let's get rid of those. And then uh, construction is complete over here. Um, that was very close to that asteroid there. I didn't, don't like that very much. Uh, so, so this is doing stuff. Um, so I really need to build some something somewhere that's generating en energy credits, really. That's quite important. But for the time being, let's build a um, research station used to collect physics society and engineering research. So let's build a, a research station there. The other things that you can build, you can build a frontier outpost, which is a space station used to claim uninhabited star systems and expand your borders. So you build it in orbit around a star, and it's kind of like a forward outpost for your, like, you know, advancement, basically. All right, okay. Um, or you can build an observation post. It can be built in orbit around planets inhabited by primitive civilizations to study their society. Um, and... Uh, and in this game as well, you can discover primitive societies, and you can uplift them to um, to be become spacefaring. Um, oh, okay, yeah. So you get to be the uh, uh, yeah uh, Romulans. Is that what the Romulans did? Uh, I think in first when they made first contact with the humans. Oh, of course they, they did. That was the Romulans, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, Which is why we and then things got a bit aggressive, and that's why there was a there's like a human Romulan stuff going on there. <laughs> um, I think I think my friend's been playing this, and he was saying that um, he uplifted a primitive race, and um, and they basically became super capitalists, uh, like very suddenly, and <laughs> and had this kind of weird belief that. Um, he, his kind of civilization was some kind of corporate holding company for them, um, so they kind of treated him not as like you know the the person who uplifted them, but the 
the the corporation that kind of like just decided to kind of like um to hold on to them it's, it's pretty, it was pretty funny uh, I'm being corrected that it was the it was the Vulcans who made first contact. I thought it was the Romulans, but maybe it was was the Vulcans. Uh, uh, okay, I I I did think the Vulcans. I mean, the but, Romulans yeah. are more aggressive, so yeah, it probably makes more sense. That the, 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 the Last Vulcans made makes for some like, peaceful reading. first contact. So. Right. So Wheatley's telling me that last month's budget report makes for some grim reading. <laughs> uh, so negative income. Uh, we may want to consider disbanding some of our ships. Oh um, my god, I need to. I need to get on this. What's? Oh, it's only a minus one uh, loss at the moment, so. It doesn't seem that bad. It doesn't seem. It depends that what bad. the one is. Yeah, I mean, that's true. Well, you know, I'll, I'll start worrying about it when it gets closer to zero. Um, is my construction ship idle? System survey complete. Okay, so this system has now been fully surveyed. Um, oh, great, this place over here can give me energy. Carbers landing. So let's um, build a mining station. So this science ship and the fleet, um, I think I'm going to send them into neighbouring galaxies to start surveying those. Oops. There they go. Oh. Okay, so these guys together, and I think I can merge them. Oh, this Armada doesn't have a leader. So I can create a new fleet. Uh, uh, shout outs to our new followers. We've Got, uh, we've picked up two since the beginning of this stream. Oh, lovely. Well, uh, we've got uh, me, Jay, and Pheasant. So, awesome. thank you for joining us. Yeah. Uh, we typically stream uh, 8 p.m. BST on Mondays and Fridays. Uh, Fridays usually are like more casual multiplayer stream, but it can really vary. It depends what's happening week to week. Uh, Mondays, for a long time, were Susan's slot, uh, and probably may still be in future but uh, there's always room for more streams <laughs> yes because the internet is a big place absolutely if we were to also do a Wednesday stream or a Sunday stream I'm sure no one would complain alright my science ship is going to survey the system and this ship is gonna also, shout out to Adam, who uh, did a stream for us the, the other day. He was playing uh, Batman's, uh, or Telltale's Batman, a Telltale Adventure. A Telltale series? I think that's a Telltale series. Construction complete. Which seems to be an interesting interpretation of Batman. Uh, all I, I couldn't help but hear all of the voice actors from the industry that I know. Especially uh. because Batman was Troy Baker. Um, oh really? Yeah, and like Falcone, one of the gangsters, is totally just Sully from Uncharted. Oh wow! So it was like straight away, it was all recognizable voices. Okay, so I'm back on like um, an even um, keel energy credits wise now. Um, so, so, so that was like the the first challenge overcome, I suppose. Yes, you you uh, re rebalanced the the checkbook, yeah. The checkbook, yeah. Yeah. So, so the science vessel is happily going around and discovering stuff over here now. Um, 
it seems that you can science quicker than you can keep up with with engineering so I might buy myself another another engineering ship if I can afford it and I don't think I can I, I'm lacking some diamonds uh, I could afford another science ship but I think construction ship is more pressing um, so we'll wait a second and we just need to wait another tick on that So the resources come in monthly, so should that be happening? No. There we go. So yeah, I, I assume the first step is really to plunder this this solar system. Yeah, pretty much. It's just kind of spread out and, and then you know, slowly take all the shit. Um, yeah, this this game's a bit of a slow burn. Um, yeah, that's, that, that's some people like that um in fact i think i think most people probably enjoy that if they've, if they've got the time maybe it doesn't always make the most exciting stream but it does mean that when things kick off yeah there'll be more stakes it does mean yeah you, you we definitely need to have kind of some chatter going on some banter to kind of keep things keep An things investment. lively yeah exactly <laughs> uh okay so science ship science ship is idle again so that's because he's finished surveying yet another system. So let's just send him over here. So Te is that Tellar's Tetlar's Palace? That's a that's a cool name for a, a place. <laughs> yeah. I wanna know if I can Oh great. Okay, building. cool. So I've set my military ships to follow the science ship to make All sure right. it doesn't get into any trouble. Yeah. Uh Give it a bit of defense. Yeah. Uh, so what's happening here? System surveyed. Uh, construction complete. I'm back in negative out balance again, you know. <laughs> but hey. Uh, so I've got another construction ship now. So uh, that is going to go over. Why can't I build that? Do I have enough to build this? Is that why it's not letting me build it? Insufficient funds. Insufficient yeah. funds. You must build additional pylons. Oh, a leader has gained a level. My scientist has been sciencing really well, so oh, okay. he's got a star. He's become a prefect. Okay. Uh, I have encountered the Mathin civilization. Uh, so they, we found them on a place called. Yiv Viba Filav uh, in the Ke Kef Kefoth system. Uh, they appear to be in the early space age. Um, primitive satellites orbiting their home world. Nation states are on the path towards joining together in a global government, and it's likely only a matter of time before they venture beyond their world and join the galactic community. So they're Earth. Pretty much, yeah. Um, so, yeah, we should build an observation post. So, yes, you can build. Stop. No. Uh, you can build an observation post. How do I do that? Oh, that's a that's a construction that that's a construction ship thing. Science ships can't do it. Oh, okay. Okay. Survey system. Okay, carry on. Okay, so I know that this. Nope. Uh, the Great Orbital Enclave is abuzz with news of the primitive alien civilization found by our fleets. 
They may not be capable of spaceflight, but the aliens of ISS Pani the Glorious are quantifiably intelligent, and their society shows all the hallmarks of a moderate, moderately advanced culture. Oh, so this is their report of us. Oh, okay. So the Mathin civilization. on an unpronounceable home planet um cool i will be building an observation post then. they've got a space station okay uh let's get one of my construction ships to build an observation post Well, we can move here for the time being anyway. Um, go to you. What are you doing? Build something. Yes. Uh, welcome back into the chat, Susan. Oh, is uh, Susan here? She's in the chat room, at least. Hello, uh, Susan. Hello, Susan. Uh, she mentioned earlier that uh, Rolo wanted to see the spider race. <laughs> nice. So, I guess I'll, you're not alone. I'll bring up the civilization screen. Uh, hold on. Government. There he is. Look. Director General of the Tarantulans. <laughs> Tarantulians. I still haven't figured out how to pronounce it, but um, Tarantulians, I think. But, um, yeah. And you had a, a governor with with Enfar or something? Or... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> his 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 age 38, these spiders are pretty long-lasting. Okay, yeah, they're doing all right. Yeah, so we have traditions available. We have enough unity to adopt a new tradition. Um, so click to open traditions for you. Verity comments, the, the music's pretty epic. It's quite nice, isn't it? It's very orchestral. I can't hear the music right now, but I did hear the little bit of the menu. There was some sweeping orchestra going on. Yeah. Okay, so let's have a look at the traditions. Oh, so these are more kind of little mini tech trees here. Uh, but you have to kind of unlock the tradition before you can start moving within the tree. And in here you have ascension perks. Uh, which are sp special bonuses that our empire can unlock by completing a tradition tree. So if I complete a tree totally, I get to have an ascension perk, which sounds exciting. Oh, okay. Um, the ascension perks list shows the ascension perks that we can potentially unlock. Some ascension perks may have special requirements. Ascension perk, become god. <laughs> yeah, that would be good. Uh, okay, so let's have a look here. Uh, so, do I want to adopt expansion, domination, prosperity, harmony, supremacy, diplomacy, or discovery? Um, I'm doing a lot of discovering at the moment, so I think I might adopt that. Um, yes, yeah, so this is giving me bonuses to my science. Um, Sci I do like the names. To boldly go. Yeah. Scientific recruitment cost, cost reduced. Yeah, okay. It's by one. Yeah, that seems pretty good. How many can you buy right now? I think I can just get one. So I can you kind of... Un I can adopt the overall thing and then... I think buy the first perk. Probably. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go for discovery. I think oh, that's my general feeling. Yes. Uh, am I? Okay. And now I need to earn more of whatever that stat is. Unity. So it costs unity to kind of build by into these tech trees, basically. Yeah. And each one seems to cost ninety-two unity at the moment. Um. So we'll leave that for now, um, and remember that's there, um, as yet another thing that can happen. Um, right. I'm still in negative balance, um, so 
go to this construction ship. Okay, why are, are you not building a observation post? I don't understand why it's not going to build an observation post. Uh, is your balance negative? <laughs> Quite possibly. Ah, okay, I don't have enough minerals. <laughs> I just immediately jumped to, is there a negative balance involved? <laughs> Oh, also, I do have enough minerals, but this planet is not within our borders. So, first, I need to build a um, frontier outpost. <laughs> Lilith thinks that you didn't say science; you said pie pants. Pie pants. Construction complete. I like it. Why aren't you letting me build this? Please let me build this. Oh, Lassico seems to know the composer's name right off the top of their head. Oh, cool. Uh, Andreas uh, Weldloft. Well, well, talked. Okay. He's composed music for almost all of the Paradox Grand Strategy games. Oh, cool. He's definitely got a, a good space vibe going on here. Is, uh, is Crusader Kings one of the Paradox lot? or is Yeah, that... yeah, that's them as well. That's them as well. Watched a, I watched a friend play play a match in that recently. Boy, I say match. Uh, they ended up like committing patricide and you know the yeah. usual things you do in those that fun, game. Those fun things. Okay, so I might have overdone it by building two construction ships because I don't actually. I, I didn't realise that I'm not actually System allowed to build in uh, star systems that I don't own. So I might at least not without a fight. <laughs> not without a fight, yeah. I might disband this one if I can. Um, how, how do I do that? Uh, move, deselect, repair. Uh, really, I can't do that. That's strange. Oh, my credits! My credits are going down at a rate of minus two now. That's not good. How how do I get rid of this guy? You want to trade really... him in? <laughs> yeah, he's just not doing anything. I don't really need. Are you have you reached the point where you would even trade him in at CEX? Uh, <laughs> mm, mm, no. mm. Where they give you 50p for him? Yeah. That's right, I'm throwing shade on CEX. <laughs> they just recently opened one so in complete. the nearest town to where I live. And I, be, uh, just for context, I basically live in the middle, well, not in the middle of nowhere, but I live in a very country sort of like, no, we don't have many uh, big franchises. Okay, so is this a place that you will be going to at all, or are you steering? Uh, I've, it's 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 interesting to go in like because like to get to CEX normally I'd have to go to somewhere like Glasgow or whatever. Uh, so it's interesting to see what they have, but good God, is everything hilariously overpriced? Mm. Um, in they CEX, they occasionally have like one or two retro things that are like, hey, that's interesting, and hey, that's probably a fair price for that but everything else is just ridiculous hmm. okay. yeah here's a second hand copy of the switch version of uh, zelda breath of the wild for uh 70 pounds oh that's interesting like um i've always associated cx with being ridiculously cheap but i haven't been in one for a while or so i think they again it may be uh I've, we're notoriously tight here so hmm I wonder if it's just uh, in comparison to what we're used to in this area, but uh, but that's still a ridiculous place regardless. And of course, the uh, they had an NES Classic in their window, hmm. and, and before the announcement that they were ceasing production on those, it was like £160. So oh, once, wow. they, once they get that announcement through, they'll but... probably get a notice to pop the prices. Once they get the memo, yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, but no, I'm sure. I'm sure good bargains can be had. Uh, Susan says uh, there's 150 for an classic at CX in the mall near where she lives, presumably. Uh, which is still too much, but at least it's not being. I bet the one in Kilmarnock is is like past 200 now, given the recent recent pricing. Okay. The thing is, we've got like we've got like cash converters and other, and we've got like games and like proper uh, other game stores. Uh, so it's not like there's no competition. It's just that it the shop looks considerably fancier than and cleaner than uh, you know because it was just built. So it looks fancy and nice, but I don't know. I don't know, man. I just. This is my that's my CEX run. I'm sure that I'm sure there are good bargains to be had. I just remember, I just remember in 2005 when uh, the Dixons collapsed and was eventually turned into a game station. So this is early game station before they bought up before game by game. I remember walking in there and picking up a Zelda One gold cartridge second hand for two pound. Now, granted, that was probably a better. Uh, uh, just a really good deal, but uh, they just had lots of good stuff like that you could find if you uh, if you were willing to dig through like big boxes of stuff. Yeah, because I, I mean, the thing that I liked uh, searching for uh, in CEX was actually kind of some secondhand kind of like. Uh, kind of foreign films and world cinema and stuff like that. Oh, sure, um, right, yeah. And and they actually had a surprisingly good collection of quite obscure, yeah, interesting yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, because like maybe people don't really appreciate yeah. it as much as they should. And that's what that always surprised me, really. Um, yeah. But you know, I, I've I've often picked up kind of like martial arts films, kind of like Hong Kong gangster movies and things from uh, from places from, from CEX. Right, I can finally afford to build uh, my frontier outpost, which I am now going to do. Hey. Um, and that will allow me to build my observation post and build other things in the system. Um, Is that sun always red? <laughs> no, you, you, it's like one of those um, those smart lights. You can change the color when it when you bounce <laughs> it. Um, put that light out. Yeah, I think that's just uh, what you'd call a, a red dwarf. Um, not the comedy show, but you know, the astronaut. No, but it is, that is what the, the ship in the comedy show is named it after. It is, yeah, it most certainly is. Um, that's a classic that ship, series. Maladi, the yeah. crimson red one up there. <laughs> yes. Okay, abnormal conditions. As our science ship scans the surface of a fell lar, it becomes quite clear that we have found something out of the ordinary. Its composition and history provide it with an extra materials that we should take opportunity to gather. My word. We will surely come across even more irregularities like this as we survey new planets. Cool, excellent. So that's that's exciting. We have discovered bizarre irregularities in the accounts. Okay, so this is another interesting thing here. We've discovered a potentially habitable planet that we could colonise. Uh, and I think this is, is just... Is that next to the... Is that beyond? The, not just the one you just discovered. I'm, I'm, I'm on the stream delay, so... Oh, yeah, sorry. This is a different one. Uh, so this is Ke Ke Kefoth. Oh, five. yeah, you're zooming in on it now. Yeah. Uh, so it's telling me here that it's a tundra world, which isn't particularly good for spiders. So it only has a 20%... Um, uh, habitability rating so we need to send Ryder down there to kind of go and beat up some <laughs> some whatever those aliens are called uh -huh, um, yeah. you know Zing. discover some kind of random alien technology that miraculously clears all of the radiation from the planet and we'll be fine um, so tundras are basically just icy yeah, yeah, it's kind of um, icy forest, basically, like kind of yeah. um, Finland and up, 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 up north in Scotland. the Arctic. Uh, yeah, it's Scotland. <laughs> up in up in the Arctic Circle. Um, so I don't think we'll be settling on there. I think you can terraform later on in the game. So, oh, this planet has dangerous wildlife. Look, um, 
Yeah. Uh, and it has massive glaciers. Yeah, so we'll be leaving that for now, I think. Um, so let's have a look at this thing that my science ship found. Well, this, I think this is the. I think this is the planet it was talking about, and I can't see anything special about it. It's got minerals associated to it. It's got it's a carbon world, and it has so it has fifteen percent extra minerals. I wonder if that's what it was getting at. Low habitability, though. Yeah. System survey complete. Uh, Susan points out that they still sell Super Smash Brothers for say Which Smash Brothers are you talking about? Granted, any of them for 30 quid is probably about right, given the fan base behind it. Hmm. Yeah. I've already done that one. Go no. Survey system, you can do that one. Excellent. Okay, okay, right. This construction. What are you doing? Can you do something while you're standing there idly? I think I might send him to. You know the thing that we haven't done yet either? Oh? Uh, we haven't looked at the. Uh, hold on. Move here. We haven't looked at the galaxy map, so that that should be quite exciting. In fact, that might be a good way to end the stream. Oh, um, see what so the scale I'm, of things we're dealing with. Yeah, is. I'm going to pretend that um, I've been saving it, uh, and not that I only just realised how you do it. Um, <laughs> so, so I'm going to click on this button for the galaxy map, and then uh, okay, so I need to zoom out a little bit more. But uh, oh my god. That's quite big, actually, isn't it? Oh man, I'm waiting. I'm look, waiting. Look, oh, you can just yeah. I'm waiting. We'll see. Oh, oh, that's starting a, to zoom out. That's a big oh. old boy. Oh yeah, that's pretty good. It, it kind of looks a bit like a fried egg. It does. It's got that epicenter in the middle of the, the, the yolk. The great fried egg galaxy. <laughs> um, the sunny side up galaxy. Sunny side up there. We've got to stay positive. Yeah. So you can see that my my tiny little area of influence here. Uh, the spider of the great orbital enclave um, and you can kind of see where my science ship has been going out and surveying various stars it's got a bit of a fog of war going Where's on here. Where's our arrival? Is, can we see that yet? No because we, we don't know we haven't met any rivals that thing that we met was just a primitive um, oh, okay. it kind of like the equivalent of a city state in Civ I guess so you know not not one of the the 15 other empires that are out there somewhere um so all we know at the moment is the location of the various stars of which there are 800 um and the names of some nebula um yeah and we have this little corner of the galaxy to call our own so there's a lot of work to be done um Possibly too much. <laughs> possibly, <laughs> possibly should have set it to a smaller galaxy. What? No. But, but we'll see. We'll see. We don't have to take over all of it. We just need to take over forty percent of it. That's the magic That's number. Yeah. And and get far enough into the game to see some of the cool kind of like end game narrative stuff that happens. Yeah, you've sort of you've sort of made me interested in that stuff. I want to want to yeah. see if things go nuts at the end. Yeah, I'm I'm sure. I've heard I've heard some. I've heard some rumours of what can happen at the end of a, of a game of this, and some of it sounds quite entertaining. It, so. it seems like the game's pretty heavy on the, the writing there with the descriptions for just, like, examining planets and stuff, which is yeah. I always approve of. That's quite nice, and I, I, I kind of feel like uh, I think the, um, the expansion has added some more of that stuff as well. So, we'll see how it goes. Um... I think it's it was good to set the galaxy shape to this because the time I played it before was a spiral arm galaxy and I did, right. I did get a bit stuck with kind of like oh I can't really go 
here you were, because I'm pending you were from all restricted directions. By the yeah. Of the galaxy. Yeah. So this seems like it might be a little bit better, unless I get kind of like completely surrounded by three other like civilizations or something. In which case, I'll just declare war on them. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Um, so everyone's doing something at the moment. My science ship is sciencing. My construction ship is constructing, and my other one is flying around. So everyone, everyone's quite happy. Um, let's just check in to the silken, the silken heart. Check the home world. Check the home world. Um, the surface. Uh, as you can see, I've got someone working that power plant now. So I'm actually, that's why I'm not in negative anymore. So I've fixed my energy problem. <laughs> um, problem. Yeah, that's pretty good. And I've got another population that's growing here. Uh, and as soon as he's grown, which is this blue bar here, which is almost full, uh, I'll be uh, gathering this uh, this mineral from here. So. By the way, you see when you're looking at the silken heart. Yes. Can you drag that window around? No. Okay. I was going to ask if you could drag it to the center a little bit because you're. Oh, amazing. my head is in the way. I do it's apologize. It's okay. I mean, we really we've got a rough idea of what the. Yeah. Head is. Um. Okay. Cool. Um. I might think. Of a I'm not sure. I think I think you've picked the best spot to be honest. Yeah, based I'm, on the UI. Maybe. I'm just wondering if um, I might have a play around with that. But anyway, um, yeah. Do you think that's uh that's a good stopping point for your first stream? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think you've 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 created a race. You named them. You chose their their system of governance. Yeah, I've started exploring. You started exploring. Um, I'm, I'm you getting. Entered... A race, although yeah. it wasn't the enemy races, but it was it was a species. You encountered a species. Yeah, yeah, and um, I'm kind of getting used to the controls again. So, um, so yeah, uh, will you will you continue this game? Will you continue exploration of the sunny side? I on, uh, I I, I hope to. Yes, I think I think I'm gonna try and uh, and pick this up again in the not too distant future. Tr try my best to make this a a regular thing. Um, cool. Stellaris is one of those games that I don't want to play uh, too much at once because it can get a bit repetitive. Uh, but yeah. it's one of those things as well where if, if you, you can just kind of dip in and out of. Um, I see it as more of a long-term project, much like you know colonizing the stars in general. You know, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mars that's... wasn't terraformed in a day, um, and all of that. So, um, uh, Adju says. Total nuclear holocaust and subsequent vacillation next time then. Yes, yeah. You've got to set manageable goals for every episode. So, like, <laughs> you know, exactly. Nuclear holocaust is totally Cobalt achievable. Cobalt bombs into the centre of the galaxy. Yeah, exactly. Um, I'm, you know, I'm, feel free to suggest goals as well. Like, you know. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. And and we can kind of... Uh, we can we can crowdsource our way through this game, uh, you know. <laughs> we did that a little bit with XCOM. We got <laughs> yeah. we named some of our soldiers after the streamers. So. Oh, that's nice. I can name some planets after people. There you yeah, go. we'll start doing that next time, maybe. Um, so cool. yeah. All right. Well, uh, thank you to everybody who joined us. Uh, we got two follow. Well, at least two followers. I haven't checked the most recent numbers, but we got at least two followers out of that stream. So thank you very much. Uh, and we'll be. Uh, We'll be back later in the week. It might be tomorrow. It might be uh, Friday. It may not be today. It may not be tomorrow, but sometime and for the rest sometime of your life. Sometime in the future, ready up video will be streaming then. That's a quote from Casablanca. Yes, I, I, I'm aware. Yeah. I'm, this... a big, I'm a big Red Dwarf fan, so bye. Oh, props. yes, of course. I see. Yeah. I, I know most of the quotes from Casablanca. Yeah. <laughs> Scott, <laughs> Scott. This could be the start of a beautiful friendship. Oh, God, here we go. <laughs> it's, it, and, and the quote is not play it again, Sam. It's just play it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, Verity says, good stream, Dean. Smoke me a kipper. Okay. Oh, nice, nice. You guys have Got a... Red, red, everyone everyone red. have a good week, then. Yes, uh, Drop the thanks. Drop the screen if you can. I will do that, yes, actually. Uh, so, uh, farewell, everyone. Uh... Uh, thanks for joining me and the spy the great spider enclave uh, on our continuing mission to um, explore the intergalactic web um, and uh, yeah we will be back with them anon um, probably
probably not on a Monday because that is when uh, Susan normally does her streaming. Um, but I will keep you posted using the power of the internet. And be sure to check our, our ready up Twitter because we we let everybody know uh, when we stream then as well. Cool, excellent. Okay. All right, thanks, Dean. You thank thanks, Bye, Scott. Everyone. Bye, everyone. Goodbye. The spiders say farewell.